To get an idea of the full beauty and breadth of Buenos Aires, I went to visit the office of Fabian Conn. As chief executive of one of Argentina's largest private banks, I suspect he doesn't have a lot of time to look out of the window. It's tough running a bank in an economy where inflation is at least 50%. Approximately 50 million bank accounts in Argentina, which is more than the entire population. Cash is still king. Cash is the king. It's very, it's very normal that you receive a deposit from, for a social plan and you, you go to the ATM, you take the money away and you spend it uh, cash. So you, you're using the bank as a cashier. The main cost, the main root of all the problems is Argentinian state spending more money than it collects for the last 50 or 60 years. That is creating uh, in Argentina a lot of uh, instability, it's creating the need of financing that money that you don't have. And there are two ways to finance money in Argentina. One, is then, one of them is getting loans. And you know, you know what happens with a loan. You go to the external market, you, you go to the IMF, and then you have to refinance, or you print money. If you go to the, to the external loans, you have to be refinancing all the time. That is the situation in Argentina at the moment. If you print money, you have high inflation, which is the other part of the reality of Argentina today. The IMF is looking at doing a staff level agreement at the moment. There's going to be no easy way out here. Yeah. But um, Argentina needs to start a way of correcting of the main problem, which is uh, reducing the fiscal deficit. So the agreement with the IMF is creating for Argentina a path to, to, to reduce deficit and reduce money printing. And that's what we will see in the next three years. It's that going to be easy for the Argentinian population? No. Is that going to be easy for the Argentinian economy? No, but it's going to be good for the medium-term future. So, the, you, know, you know the old adage, I owe the bank $500, that's my problem. I owe the bank $500 million, that's the bank's problem. That is, in essence, what's the problem here in Argentina. You already owe the IMF $44 billion. You're right. The, the main debt that IMF has around the world is Argentina. It's the main debtor. So that's why what you're saying is, is right. Argentina is a, is a problem not only for Argentinians, but for the IMF as well. When an agreement is reached, are you confident that the politicians in this country will be able to keep to that agreement? Bearing in mind there's an election next year, and if we look at the midterm elections or if we look at the congressional elections here, they suggest disruption. No one's going to live in a country with more than 50% inflation per year. So um, my logic is saying that if you are a politician, you will understand this and you will, you will provide for a solution for Argentinian economy. So I'm optimistic that this time uh, we will start the path of uh, reordering our economical structure. I hear you have a nice big lobby. You're trying to say what? This lobby, let me tell you something, it's open to people. If you are an Argentinian citizen, you can walk in. This Julio Le Park is called the kinetic artist. He basically does art with movement, yeah. things that move and, and have light. So from any position you are, you, you will see a different thing. If I take a dollar out of my pocket and give it to you, then it will be how much? 105 today, as a bank. If I go around the corner and talk to the chap around the, in the, in the back, back alley, he'll give me more than 200. So I go for dinner. And anywhere else in the world, I would just get out the corporate card and just put the card down and pay for dinner. But here I'm thinking, ooh, I could get that half price if I nip round the corner and I get some pesos at the uh, unofficial rate, which of course is not legal, of course, I hasten to add, yeah. so one wouldn't do it. But it, it creates a, a weirdness. Yeah, it creates awareness and, and it's a reason for not growing. When you have these kind of things, another, another uh, factor that you have to take into account in the country is, are we growing? And in the last four years, half of the years, the GDP in Argentina was reduced and not growth. That's a very big problem for Argentina. The GDP per capita is not growing for the last 20 years. You mix in the circles, the elite circles of 
government ministers, central bankers, particularly politicians, don't you ever just want to say to them, stop spending? That's it. Stop spending. We know how to get rid of inflation. Yeah, I, 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 I want to say it, and I said it. Uh, the, the real situation is that you have the senior citizens, you have the poor people, you have the works that have to be done all over Argentina, you have investments to do, and you have a, a, lot, a, a need to provide. So the, the short term need to provide, it's, uh, it's not good for the, for the, for the medium term. So I, we are confident that this time, uh, I think that the population understood that we need, we need a solution and the politicians understood that they need to provide a solution in order to be elected in, in, the, in the future.